Okay, this is number one from the 2010 Form B AP Physics exam. This is primarily a mechanics problem dealing with energy and circular motion. And we've got ourselves a, a roller coaster. We've got a block up here. It's going around a loop, ejecting off the edge at point C. We've got some geometry given here. We want to know the speed of the block when it leaves at point C. Meaning it is going to this down. It's going to cruise down the track. You know, it's going to go woohoo, go around the loop, we're going to have a lot of fun, and then we're going to go, phew, we're going to take off. A lot of times kids see this loop right here and they're like, oh, it must affect its speed here at point C. Well, in real, li real life it might because there's friction and that's more track, but otherwise, no, it doesn't. Because any speed it loses on its way up the loop, it's going to regain right back on the way down. So for part A, we can ignore this middle section and treat this as purely an energy analysis. We know in the very beginning, we've got potential energy. Initial. It's not moving, so there's no... At the end, we must still have potential. We're still some distance above the zero point. But we also have kinetic energy. Conservation of energy tells us our original uh, potential energy, mgh1, must equal my final potential energy, m, that's a weird g, mgh2 plus my final kinetic, one half mv squared. We don't even need to know the mass of the block to solve this problem. Ms go away. <coughs> We're trying to get v by itself, so I'm going to subtract gh over. I'm going to show that that really is G times H1 minus H2. I'm going to double everything. And then i got to square root it. This is my velocity. So, the velocity is going to equal the square root of 2 times, I like to use 10 for gravity in mechanics problems, so 2 times 10, yeah, let's not get lazy, meters per second squared. times the difference between my initial and final height, so that's going to be 2 meters minus 0 0.5 meters. And if you wrote 1.5 meters in right from the start, that's fine. And uh, we go ahead, toss this in our calculator, and we're going to get 5.5 meters per second. That is the velocity at point C. Now, B, we do address the loop. At uh, point B, we want to do our free body diagram. Identify all the forces. Well, let's get that guy way back here, and he's like, phew, 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 right, and takes off, so we're at that spot. At that spot, here's what I see happen all the time. Kids like to throw in this magical F sub C. They need to throw in this, this magical centripetal force, right? And that's not an actual force, y'all. That's just the name of the net force. All we should be indicating are the actual true forces that happen to then contribute to the circular motion. So at that spot, we have its weight down. Gravity's still trying to pull it down. And think about this. If it was going fast enough, it would want to leave the track at that spot. It wants to take off. It's gone. Therefore, we need the track to exist there. That, that vector just drew the velocity, by the way. We want the track to, to exist there to stop it from leaving. So the track has to push down on the cart as well. What is the name of the force that comes from something like a track? Well, that's the normal force. So, what we're looking for down here are two arrows down. One is mg, or f sub g, and the other is n, or f sub n. I don't care how you rate it. Weight and normal force. Those are the only two forces there. Don't add anything else. Don't put centripetal force there. It's not a force. C. We want to calculate the minimum speed the block can have at point B without losing contact with the track. Alright, so that's saying magically. It's not really magical, but it's extremely unlikely. I'm going to delete most of this stuff. What speed could this cart be traveling such that at that exact spot it barely touches the track, or it doesn't touch it all, or we can make a gap here, and at that spot, I'll just cruise forward. 
basically meaning we don't need the track at all. If we go too slow, it'll fall out of circular motion and plummet. If we go too fast, it's going to try to leave the track, and the track needs to push down on it. Therefore, we're looking for the speed in which we need no track. Well, what is the force that came from the track? That's the normal force. C is saying, what speed does the cart need to be traveling with such that the only force that we need to provide the centripetal force is indeed the weight? So let's set this up in terms of dynamics. We know at that spot the net force is centripetal. Therefore, it needs to equal ma sub c. I like to replace my a sub c with v squared over r. It's more, more intuitive for me. Well, that centripetal force is the net force. So what creates the net force? The weight itself. There will be no normal force here because that will be the minimum speed. Anything more than that, we need a normal force. Anything less than that, we definitely need a force or else it's going to fall. V ends up being the square root of RG. Nice and simple. Radical 0.6 times 10, or radical 6. And that's going to get me an answer of, well, one second while I calculate, 2.45 meters per second. All right, that's the minimum speed here. Now let's go down the D. Calculate the minimum height above the bottom of the track at which the block can be released and still go around the loop without losing contact with the track. There's a ton of different ways I can solve for this. I'm going to use kind of more of a conceptual approach. So this is more universal for other style problems similar to this. I need to kind of clean up my workspace. And so what we're saying here is where does it need to be released from such that it will indeed only have that 2.45 meter per second velocity here, no more, no less. So let's go conceptually. If we wanted to make it so it made its way to B, just to point B, not continue forward, or another way of thinking about it is if we had a hill extending this way, and I ignored the loop's effects completely, at what height does it need to leave the side of the track here such that it finishes a height equivalent to point B? So if we wanted to just make it to point B, it needs to leave a height in line with that spot, which is twice the radius, or 1.2 meters. But that's not going to get the job done to making the loop. All that's going to do is get it to the top of the loop. If we released it from, let's go move south, there we go, and let's try this one more time. Okay, well, I'm going to give up on that idea. If we were to release this, okay, I'm about to close my computer and smash it in a million pieces. Let's try this one more time. If we were to take this guy here, and uh, uh, come on, it just doesn't want to do it. It just doesn't want to go. So we're just, oh, there we go. Yay, everyone's celebrating and clapping for me. So if we take this guy and release him from right here, he's going to go, do, 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 do. he's going to get right here, and he's going to have no more speed left. It's at zero velocity, and it's just going to fall. And it's going to be ugly. So we know we need to go even higher than the 1.2 spot. So the way I want to look at it is what is the additional potential energy needed to give it the kinetic energy that'll give it this velocity. Or I'm looking for my additional height. I know at a minimum, I need at least 1.2 meters plus this additional potential energy height. So the additional PE, so I'm just gonna call this like PE2 or PE prime or really anything in addition to the 1.2 PE. This sucker needs to be equal to the kinetic energy that I need to make it make it through the loop. So my additional height, mgh2, must equal my new m one half mv squared with the v's being that 2.45. And so that height that I need is going to be v squared over 2g. That's the additional height I need. 
So let's give you that 2.45 squared divided by 20. Again, that's the height above that 1.2 meters. And that's uh, requiring an additional... Where am I at here? I think I did my math a little wrong. That's requiring an additional height of... I am lying to you because I do that. Let me take a look at this one more time. Right, okay, I had some calculators here. Anyhow, this ends up being 0 0.3 meters. Therefore, my actual height is 1.2 plus that 0.3 meters, or I need to leave from a height of 1.5 meters. By the way, for future reference, that additional height always ends up being the radius of the loop divided by 2. You can figure that out all on your own, or you can believe me. That's it for number one. Thank